Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. And now, here are Bob and Richard. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gambling with an Edge. My name is Bob Dancer. And I'm Richard Munchkin. Our guest today goes by the name of Big Red, a successful video poker player. Big Red was a doctoral student in computer science when he came across a particular machine that he felt maybe he could beat at a local casino that we're going to call Bob's. It has nothing to do with me, but we got to call it something, so Bob's it is. The tale is interesting, I promise. Big Red, welcome to Gambling with an Edge. Thank you. Good to be here. The game you ended up exploiting was called Moving On Up. When you first found it, you went to the Wizard of Odds website to see if it was covered. What did you find out there? Well, uh, essentially, it helps to kind of explain what the game is itself to uh, the, what the core features of it are. Um, in terms of the gameplay, it's basically the same as a regular single line video poker game where you're dealt a hand, you hold some cards, you draw, and you get paid out whatever you wind up with at the end. Um, but in this game and moving on up, you, uh, get to continue drawing after you're done with that first draw. So you draw, you draw, you're paid out, and then you get to draw again and you get paid out again. Um, so you might do something, for example, like hold an ace that turns into a pair of aces. Uh, and then after that, you hold that pair of aces and it might turn into four of a kind. Um, or if you're dealt a four of a kind to start with, you may hold it both times and get paid out for two four of a kinds. Um, now the cards that you throw away on the first draw, they do go back into the deck for the second draw. So you could have something like four aces and say a five and a five of spades and throw away the five and get a 10 of hearts, and you're still looking for that kicker, and you throw away the 10 of hearts on your second draw, and you get the five of spades back again. So that can happen. Um, now, the payouts for the hands are the same. It doesn't change whether it's the first draw or the second. So if a four of a kind pays out something, it pays it out on every draw. Um, and because you get to move on up to a potentially better hand by you know continuing to redraw, you have to pay extra credits in this. So there's two variants of the game where one you get to uh, basically draw twice and one you get to draw three times. In the variant where you get to draw twice, you pay 15 credits. So instead of two five-credit video poker hands, you're playing paying 15 credits. And in the triple draw, you pay 30 credits. So, and this is not like a game like multi-strike where you need to hit a paying hand to continue. Even if you get nothing, you still get to continue drawing. Um, the biggest wins in this game basically come from making strong hands on the first draw and continuing to hold them as they go up or, you know, maybe improve them better. You know, four of a kind, you know, four aces into four aces with a kicker, for example. Um, now Mike said that, uh, Mike Shackelford, Mike Shackelford. Yes. He said that basically, um, solving, coming up with a strategy to the game would be like the programming equivalent of climbing Mount Everest. So he did not have any specific strategies on it. Um, challenge accepted. Yeah, pretty much. So. <laughs> but he did publish IGT statistics as to what they thought. They claim the games are worth. Right, yeah. Um, he looked at it as a very difficult problem, and then uh, I guess his connections at IGT, he just asked them, and they said, okay, here you go. Um, and I had actually found this game where it had a 99.6 return, which was pretty good. Um, so even if I could get the strategy, the game itself, there's nothing broken about the game itself. There's nothing weird about the 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 core elements of the gameplay and it wasn't uh you know a profitable machine at the base but other things made it a profitable machine um and that's what made it kind of interesting to look at um the fact that mike had the returns from igt at least give me gave me some insight into uh that there was a strategy that was known or you know igt had additional information whether they had um, had some trick to it or they brute forced it, they knew something more about it. And it was really unclear if a similar strategy um, would have worked because when you add in these extra draws, it complicates things quite a bit. 
because, um, for example, you know, in some games you can play, you know, nine six jacks or better with a nine five, you know, on a nine five game, you're not giving up, you know, that much by playing a slightly wrong strategy. But with these additional draws, you know, a game may look like, oh, yes, I'm very familiar with that, but it's actually quite different. Um, and I actually have two pretty good examples mm -hmm. that illustrate that. So, um, one is, you know, imagine if you have uh, arbitrarily many draws and you start out with in deuces wild four deuces. That's a great hand. And you would just love to hold that for every single draw for a million draws if you have it. But not really, because if you can start throwing away those deuces and working towards a royal flush, then you're not going to take that long to get to a royal flush. And then you can hold it for a bunch of hands and do even better. And a more uh, subtle example is if you have uh, a straight flush, say nine through king. Well, you usually wouldn't throw away the nine to go for the ace. You would just hold the straight flush and, you know, say, oh, well, I'm not going to get the royal. But it doesn't take too many draws before, you know, if you get to draw and draw again and draw again before you, th you say, actually, I do want to throw away the nine. Let's see if we can get that ace and, you know, get a few royal f flushes to pay out here. Yeah, the king through nine hand in my classes, I call it chicken versus gambler. <laughs> and it's different in jacks are better than it is in deuces wild. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, classes are still going on. Come by and uh, we'll show you. All right. So the game 99.6 is a good game. If you have something with it, you can ha you need a slot club, you need a promotion, you need a drawing, you need... Um, well, I, I want to ask: Did you trust IGT's numbers, or did you did your research show their number to be accurate? Um, ultimately, my research did show their numbers to be accurate, um, and I didn't really have any reason to distrust this information. And on on Mike's site, anyway, I, I would have I think noticed because there are lots of different pay tables, and the um, you can kind of tell the difference uh, as as the pay tables go up. Oh, this is eight five. This is eight six. You know, whatever. Um, and you can see the percentage differences. So it didn't look to me like any of those were out of order. So you know, as as this payout went up, the return went up. You know, in a proportional manner. So at least they all logically made sense with respect to each other. Um, and I again, I didn't have any reason to believe that these were not accurate numbers. For years, IGT has had a man named Chris Bruni, who is their mathematician with all kinds of good computer programs, and he's the one who's been responsible for getting the return on many games, and he's very, 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 very good. And, uh, you know, Shackelford highly looks up to Chris Bruni as somebody. Well, Chris is gone now. Where he's gone, I don't know, but he's no longer at IGT. But... Um, in general, the IGT numbers are spot on, and so you can be trusted. All right, so this is a game, 99.6. There needs to be something else to make it worth your time. Um, what did you find? Well, so init the initial, the interesting part about the game, half of it has nothing to do with the actual game or or the, the solution or, or what I did with it necessarily. Um, the half of the story is how I came to fi find it in the first place, basically. So, um, all right, let's tell that half. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it was at this casino Bob's, uh, where they, uh, they didn't really have too many good games or promotions, but out of nowhere, they did a drawing for a car, which was just unusual um, for them. But I guess they decided to make a go of it, you know, and put out something big and hope that they got a bunch of gamblers in there. Um, and while looking for games to play for that, I found another one there that was kind of hidden, and it was also 99.6. So you would think, okay, well, why even go after this other one that is the same return? Um well, so I, I didn't even know of this moving on up game yet. I was playing this other game that was 99.6 return, trying to get uh, entries because I thought I had a, you know, could win a car or something like that. And fortunately, I did get picked as a finalist in, in this drawing and I, and I won. Um, 
And a little bit later, um, some months later, they had a big cash drawing that was similar in nature. Um, I played, but I didn't get called for it. Uh, but I was there when I when they did call the people for the drawing. And I remember seeing the guy that won the big cash prize. It wasn't a car this time. It was a big cash prize. And I remember thinking, that's actually the same case that I picked because it was cases that you picked. Like Everybody, a suitcase or yeah, sort of. Or yeah. Yeah. Like a briefcase. case. case. Yeah. And in each one, they, they'd open it up when it was time and reveal the prizes. And I realized, oh, he actually picked the same case I had. And it was because when I had picked it, um, I had noticed a scuff on it. I mean, I was staring right at it. I noticed a scuff like somebody had bumped it up against the edge of a table, you know, and it was plain as day. Um, and when I saw this guy, I mean, the light bulb came on, exploded, you know, a few other light bulbs came on and exploded and it was on. Um, another feature of this drawing that made it well wait wait, so your idea is that they're always going to put the prize in the scuffed briefcase yeah i mean i i well what it was is the other four prizes uh were the same you know the remaining prizes were all the same they just changed out the top prize and so i thought oh "Oh, so they're not changing the other yeah they i think they put the cases away and then dug them out later and then said oh we're not giving a car away this time put money in that case instead wow and you know i was i just happened to be a little bit observant about this and so yeah and then i went and played this other this other machine it's it's a low stakes place it was a low stakes machine but i grinded um you know and i was playing this 99.6 game again this is not moving on up yet um and they had a worse game where i was giving up over a percentage advantage but with that strong of an inkling about the drawings, it was like, oh, okay, we really need to, you know, like this, this seems good. So I even brought my wife, who was not much of a gambler, um, and we took turns basically. I, I, you know, got into a little bit of the strategy and, and, and we're playing this, this one machine and a worse machine. And sure enough, uh, I got called in the next drawing. And uh, this is another feature of the drawing that made it really easy to take advantage of, unfortunately, for them. Um, they, uh, you, usually in a drawing, I didn't know this, you know, I, I had little experience in drawings, but usually in a drawing, you, um, you get to pick in the order you came up or the order they called, you know, they call 10 people. The first person that gets called doesn't matter as long as they show up. They're the first person to pick. That was not the case with these. They called all the names, and whoever was first to show up to the drawing area got to pick first. So now, I mean, I knew where the case was. I thought um, I did. You know, I'd be able to confirm it after the next drawing. I think uh, I knew where the case was. I knew how to be the first person to get picked. So all the only problem was just play enough to get picked at that point. So again, you know, me, uh, my wife and we were playing and I got called and sure enough, I got up there and I knew exactly where the case was and boom, you know, I won it. And, um, did you go Hollywood and when you, when it opened up and it was the, was the car, did you, you know, jump up and down and scream like this is a big surprise in your life or did you, uh, just like, okay, good. Yeah. I knew it just is what I expected. No, no. Uh, and in this case, uh, it was, it was money, uh, for the, for these sets of drawings. Um, uh, and I did, yeah, yeah. You have to, you know, make a big show of it and, and all that. Um, and, uh, it was at that point. So I had, I had won the big prize and, uh, you couldn't win it again, but, um, my wife still could. So she played the better game, the 99.6 game. Again, this is not moving on up. And I just kind of hung around. I didn't have much of a reason to play. I couldn't win the big, the big prize anymore. Um, and right next to that machine was moving on up. And, uh, that's where I kind of discovered it. Um, of course, to, to finish that story, yes, my wife did get picked in the second drawing. Yes, she did win the big prize. And the fun part of it is that I was, you know, I couldn't win the big prize, but the last person in the drawing didn't show up. And so I got called as like the last alternate for it. And so I didn't even get to pick my case, but I still wound up with second place. So, so in this, how come you were able to win the cash prize when you had already won the car? 
that didn't count as uh, winning dif- the big prize? Uh, different sets of drawings. So these oh, these okay. are separated. So it was, you know, if they do, oh, we're doing this this season or this month or whatever, you know, you can only win once. But that was different from a prior one. So you could win again uh, in success. I see. Different yeah. unrelated drawings. So Was this a casino where you and Kathy could play on the same card or did she have to play on her card and you have to play in your card and that was the only option um we it was so we we all we played on our own cards um and it was such that there if you got a lot of drawing entries there was a point at which it just became too saturated it just wasn't worthwhile anymore so it, it would never have It would have worked out a lot better separately anyway, because, again, two chances to win the big prizes. And, you know, the the relative competition at the place uh, was fairly easy. There wasn't there. There weren't a lot of people um, competing, basically. So it was easier to win. Let's put it easier to get called to be a finalist. Let's put it that way. And after you and Kathy won, somehow you lost my phone number. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. This is. I mean, I. It was. It was a very, very secret play, and I, I like. I like to keep it secret, um, and I don't think anybody really found out about it. Now, still haven't. You know, the drawings or whatever. Um, you know, those were. They actually fixed those uh, shortly thereafter. So the next time they used the same cases, but they had different covers. So uh, I think they had some inkling that maybe. Back to back winners, you know, was a little bit unusual and they didn't do the drawings for a while. And when they did, it was somebody else running them and they put a cover on it. And so, you know, whatever. So, but the, the interesting thing about, um, finding moving on, because again, this still doesn't get into why, you know, why the game was really interesting or better. Um, and you could, you couldn't actually get as much money in on moving on up. It was a low denomination game, uh, but all their games were low denomination. Um, but it was a little bit faster. You could play it a little bit faster and, and, but not significantly, but the really interesting thing about moving on up, especially where it was, um, is that it was miscoded as a slot machine and casinos often treat those very differently in terms of how they award points or drawing Mm -hmm. entries or both. And in this case, we were actually earning something like six times as many uh, entries into the drawing as we should have been. And we were on on the points that they give back to you. Um, we had something like a two to three percent advantage over the house um, just because of the way it was miscoded. So it was just it was a video poker game that was too close to 100 percent that they thought was a slot that was probably down in 90 percent range and they gave awards uh, rewards appropriately for that but that's not what it was but only you knew that because nobody else had any idea how to play the game yeah um you know i don't think any i don't think it would have been likely it's it was a two out of the way place and small denomination and very weird and nobody you know nobody would have any inkling about strategy for it and they would immediately look at it any any you know advantage player would look at it and say i have no idea about this strategy they would go to mike's site and they would say oh mike doesn't know anything about it either who cares you know and they would just look it by you know it would just have to take sitting down and playing at it and playing it to be like wait i'm getting these things much faster than i thought i was and it was just a you know a freak occurrence again all due to the fact that I had won, and my wife had not, and this was the machine was right next to the one she was playing. So, how long did it take you to figure out the strategy? So there were multiple stages. So for for my part, um, as soon as I found it and realized all the pieces were there, you know, okay, we have a place that occasionally has a you know nice drawing, and on top of that, this is just giving points away, pretty much. Um, I wanted to get a solution pretty quick. So I had, I had worked out, um, I had worked out a solution to the strategy or at least hacked one up that I thought was pretty good, pretty passable, um, pretty accurate within about a month. So 
that's about how so long you weren't deterred by Mike's analysis that it was like climbing Mount Everest, right? Yeah, I mean, he it, just he might be a fast climber. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it it seemed like a thing. Um, so I mean, there there are multiple solutions to to this. There's the one that I came up with. The that that's what I needed. There is the one that um, is for basically a dissertation to get a, a doctorate degree. And then there is a simpler solution, um, which we'll talk about all of these, I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, so, there, I mean, there, there are three solutions there. And, uh, again, with as much of an advantage as, as there was on this machine, it seemed like if I could get, you know, a, a halfway good approximation – you know, I would be doing okay. You know, I didn't need to get the full strategy. I just needed to be able to answer some questions about like some big hands that, you know, like you think about these things that might plague, uh, you know, players in other games like, oh, do I break up this full house to go for four aces or whatnot? You know, so it was those sort of big questions that I wanted to answer and just to be able to, because I mean, when you, you look at a game and you play it and you can kind of intuit most of the right moves, but it's those, it's those ones that come up a lot and you're really not sure about if you can work those out, you get pretty close. Yeah. And, um, bad Royal flush draws like ace king 10 with a pair of Kings. If you had enough draws, it would always be right to go for ace king 10. Mm -hmm. But if you only had one draw and this game is usually right to hold the Kings, so that might be one worth at least looking at. Right, yeah. So, I mean, the the big one for me, I think, is um, in the particular game that I was playing, I really wanted to know, like, should I break up a full house to go for four of a kind, you know, on, on some of these hands? And that just kind of evolved into, I think I can actually come up with a halfway decent strategy for this. So Now, is this by using your computer science skills or pencil and paper? How did you do this? Um Okay, so the basically I, I had used a s simulation. You know, you can just sit there and, and, you know, deal out the cards a bunch on a computer and say, okay, if I do this, what happens? If I do this other thing, what happens? So, you know, you, you write up code that does that and, you know, then you, then you do that. So, um, so yes, it was, yeah, a lot of programming. Uh, it didn't really care so much about the, the pencil and paper because, um, you know, this seems something that was, somewhat doable basically you know with a computer and uh, i didn't even consider looking at it from a more basic level or abstract level yet so okay good so you had a basic strategy you're getting points through the wazoo and these points are worth something but the, you can't with not the drawings but uh drawings are over or or unscuffed drawings Fair drawings aren't aren't interesting to you, apparently. <laughs> no, I mean they, they were. Uh, they they did not do many drawings after that. Not because of that. I think they had some other changes going on that had been coming from so, for some time. So, so this game still exists. Um, actually, no, uh, it does not exist anymore, as far as I know. When uh, I think, according to Mike, he had uh, found it in six or seven years ago, or something like that. And, uh, when I was playing it, I was, I had pretty good information that there were only three in the United States. Wow. And I have pretty good information now that there are none, including some firsthand information. Like literally I went there, oh, it's not there anymore. Okay. You know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that, that it's just gone. I don't think it was ever popular. Um, I think there are lots of video poker games that, come out that are interesting and just don't catch on for whatever reason. So, and I think this is just one of them. Do you feel like a murderer? <laughs> you know, I, I mean, this is, uh, this happens all the time with table games. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they'll get placed in a few places and most of them don't catch on and they disappear. Yeah. You know, some of them get just crushed by pros and they disappear. So. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think this was an example of, um, them like anybody feeling like this the machine was necessarily losing too much money at least from like igt's side or anything like that again the the core machine itself is fine um it's it's just that all these other things that the casino messed up they had drawings that sure. were messed up they had the points that were messed up 
um, you know, that's, that's what it was. So, and it was just time for them to, um, where I was playing it in the location that I was playing it, it literally doesn't even exist anymore. So like the machine got moved because they did something else with that space, you know, and it was just like, Oh, let's get rid of it. You know? Okay. Auto hold. There's the machine you were playing. There were, there were two steps to it. There's your first decision as to what to hold, which is the tough one. And on a two-step game, then once you make that decision, the last hand is pretty simple. It's just regular video poker. Now, this machine had an auto hold on it for part of it, or was that optional? Or Yeah, um, it, it actually did have an auto hold, um, which is strange uh, because you don't see that too often. Um, and I don't personally have a lot of ex- experience with auto hold, but... The I think the feeling was is that IGT felt like they needed to put this halfway auto hold mode in there because what that allows you to do is basically you play the first draw and then if you're playing the double draw game, then it does the second draw for you automatically um, and, you know, it says optimally as well. And if you're playing the triple draw mode, it'll it'll do both of those last two draws automatically. So you're only playing that first draw, and then it continues on with it. And I guess they got the feeling that they just didn't want people to have to play three hands in one, like, say, you do with multi-strike, you know, where, you know, you play that, and the next one, you make a decision on that. This one, you just make a decision on the initial hold, which made the game a lot easier for me because obviously I don't need to know multiple strategies. Each different um, draw has will have a different strategy because you have a different number of draws remaining. And as you pointed out, the last draw is just regular single line video poker strategy for whatever that game is. Um, so, you know, with the auto hold, you only need that the strategy for the first draw. So it was accurate. The uh, yeah, I, I noticed uh, in all my observations of playing it, I noticed that the auto hold was was accurate, um, you know, and if it wasn't, there's not really a whole lot I could do about it. Like, I'm not going to complain about Oh, a, you couldn't it, override it and pick something else? Oh, no, no, you can't. You, you couldn't even turn it off. Yeah, it just did it automatically. There's no option for it. Like, it forced you to do that. So. Maybe wow. maybe the casino could change something in the settings to disable that, but I'm I wasn't aware of that, and I definitely was never going to ask any questions about this machine at the casino or to anybody, basically. So, so yeah. if they had well, it also speeds the game up a lot. Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that was that was um, it wasn't a factor in playing it. If 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 as good as it was, if I needed to figure out multiple strategies and learn those, I would have done that. Um, you know, even as good as the drawings were at you know the, the specific casino. Um, you know, if that wasn't available, I would have just played that other game and just been like, wow, I'll just play this for twenty hours, you know, and and grind it out, you know. But yeah, yeah, the auto hold definitely speeds it up. Uh, you can play, you know, get more hands through. If the same pay schedule was available on the the one with two draws versus three draws and it had an auto hold on the last two draws on the three, then that would give you great insight as to how to create the strategy that you were playing. Right, yeah. Um, so with this game, there were a variety of pay tables. And again, there's a double draw and a triple draw variant. And... In some cases, those pay tables are identical, and in some uh, cases, those pay tables are not identical. But yes, and if you have the the triple draw version, and you can watch it auto hold on that second draw, and then you can kind of reverse engineer uh, the strategy for the double draw game, if that was the case. Unfortunately, for the one that I was playing, that was not the case. But also, I think from a sample size perspective, you would have to play a lot of video poker to get the types of hands that you wanted on that second line to get it to auto hold the right things to confirm certain suspicions that you would have. Like, you'd have to be really observant um, and take a lot of time to do that, I think. Welcome to my world. When I was uh, starting out creating strategies for all these games back in the mid-90s, Mike, the computer 
computer software programs were not as useful as they are today, and I had no computer programming skills to speak of. And so it was a lot of a lot of repetition. But um, well, good. So there's a lot more to this story. We're going to take a brief break and talk about our sponsors, and then we're going to be back to Big Red and finish up the story. South Point has more than 10,000 games, returning more than 99%. This is more than anyone else has. They This month has a $500,000 spin to win. Every Monday through Thursday, earn four spins by playing $500 at slots or $2,000 at video poker per spin. In the first two weeks of the drawings, the spins have averaged, for me, slightly over $12. So on a $2,000 coin in, a $12 award makes it a 0.6% return. This is on top of the regular slot club return of 0.3, so it makes triple points for your first $8,000 coin in four days a week. Another way to look at it is if you play the maximum four spins, that's an extra $50 bonus on they have a variety of games that are basically even money with a slot club, and now you get a $50 bonus for playing it for a few hours, depending on the stakes you play. On January 20th, Martin Luther King Day, there'll be a $32,000 hot seat promotion between 8 a.m. and midnight, approximately every three minutes. One person playing with their card inserted receives the $100 free play. This is the type of thing that, assuming you're playing your spin to win, you should do it during those hours as a kind of doubling up on the promotions the it's hard to win the spin to win it doesn't happen very often but if you're going to be there anyway for the other promotions you might as well do it and you might get one or more of those hundred dollar prizes for the free video poker class on january 21st it's the second week of the classes first game at noon nine seven double bonus the second game at 2 p.m. is 9-6 double-double bonus. Both of these games return about 99%, which is usually a showstopper because there are other games in the casino that return higher. The reason we teach these games are manyfold. One is they play almost identically to the higher returning games that are found occasionally in other casinos. And so once you learn the strategy, you can apply it elsewhere. Number two, we're going to be teaching other games in the casino this semester that are based on these games. And the third reason is these are popular games in the casino and players play them anyway. So even if they aren't the best games to play, if they're going to play them, they might as well learn how to play them well. Fourth reason is they have different strategies from each other. In double bonus, flushes return seven for one and straights return five for one. In double-double, it's six and four, respectively. These two numbers really change the strategy. And so having these two games back-to-back, you can see how changing in the pay schedule affects the way you play a game. And it's quite instructional as to how it happens. At videopoker.com, it's the best place to play lots of different games. They have a gold membership for $8.95 a month, $79.95 a year. An additional membership called the Pro Membership is available. It's sold separately uh, at $6.95 a month or $49.95 a year. Or if you're already a gold member, you can add it on the top of it for approximately $3 a month. The big advantage to the Pro Membership is it gives you 100% accurate correction on Ultimate X and quick quads of any of the available pay schedules these are this is the base game of ultimate x they have had six or seven different versions out there but this would be the base game any from triple play and five play the data set to support this is huge which means you need to play it online rather than download the machine and play it offline so 
and there's the monthly fee to it. But should you be an Ultimate X player, this strat, this is must-have software. At predicted.org, you can make small bets on lots of political events, such as relating to the, the impeachment, who's going to be candidates for various offices, will somebody testify, will somebody finish out their term, a variety of things. If you are a political junkie, this stuff is fascinating. It is in a gambling type of format. The stakes are low, but for those of us who are both gamblers and political junkies, it is an opportunity to capitalize on our knowledge. I just want to say I'm actually on the site as you're speaking. Yes. Right now, uh, Trump is even money to win the uh, the election. Um, so In if you have a strong feeling either way, you know, you can get him for or against it even money. So. A strong feeling about whether he should be elected or a strong no, feeling. whether he will of, be elected. Yeah. Uh-huh. Very good. Then Blackjack Apprenticeship is an excellent site for those of you who wish to be successful at Blackjack. They have a variety of training programs. Uh, Colin Jones posts a number of free videos on YouTube where you can check out if his teaching style works for you. His most recent video is Why You Suck at Blackjack. And he goes through the five common reasons that people are n not playing a winning game at Blackjack. Watch the video. See if it makes sense to you. The See if his teaching style works. The information they give at Blackjack Apprenticeship is very strong. And if you want to get good at this game, that's a good source. All right. Now... At the time you first came across this moving on up, you were an ABD in computer science. What the hell is an ABD, and how was this useful to you to find the game at this time? Well, ABD is basically, uh, it means all but dissertation. You've done all the classes that you need to do. You have passed two exams. The first one is a comprehensive exam. And essentially, just imagine they stick you in a room for eight hours and they ask you random questions from every final exam you've ever had in that subject and a couple that you may not have had. And you still have to pass it. You still have to, like, pass it. Um, and then you pass a qualifying exam, which is basically you go in front of a committee of professors and you say, here is an original idea here is something that is worthwhile, it fits into this subject, and I can make contributions that other people have not made and that other people will be interested in, in some level. Um, in reality, actually, usually nobody cares about it, nobody reads it, and, you know, you're lucky if, you know, everybody on your committee even reads it. But you have to pass that exam, and they, they basically verify, because they don't want people going out into the world who have the name of that school or this professor said that, you know, you did this work or whatever, and then you turn out to be an idiot. But that's a it's a great stage to be in um, when you're in it for the first time, because it means that you've passed all the other hurdles. All you really have to do is write your dissertation, which is the hard part. It's the one that you have to do yourself. There's no nobody holds your hand on that one. Um, and this was this was useful because. Uh, I mean, part of your job is to come up with a problem that's worthy of solving. And a lot of times that comes from a student working with a professor and the professor has certain research that they're doing and, you know, that the, the student gets into it. Um, but I, I basically come up with this problem and I have to show them why it's, why it's interesting. And of course, having Mike there saying that, you know, Mike is like the authority. Like if I can say, oh, Mike Shackelford is this guy. And even if you don't know anything about, um, you know, gaming, gambling or whatever, and nobody in my department did, nobody in my department was in any way related to any of that. Um, but to be, say, here is this guy who is an industry leading expert and he says this is hard. Um, it kind of gives a little bit more, uh, you know, 
depth to the problem and it makes it easier for people to see exactly why it is difficult. So, um, you know, I had basically, I had solved what I needed for the strategy that I needed, but I saw that I could probably take this and extend it out a little further and come up with, um, you know, a, a general solution to find not just strategies for the game that I needed, but all of them. And then also to, um, you know, connect this into other things and say, okay, well, the improvements that I, that I did computationally, some of the, the, the things that I did programming wise, these can be applied in other fields for speed ups and stuff like that as well. And so they bought this, they said, this sounds worthy. You got to do something. This sounds good. Mm -hmm. And so you did that. Yes. And so you're now doc, is it? Mr. Dr. Red or Dr. Big Red? Dr. Or Mr. Red. The, the, uh, so, um, all right. So, uh, we don't have a lot of doctors nope. on this program, and I'm actually itching today. I want to talk to you about that. Okay, good. So, now you're a doctor. So, this so, is above my pay grade, so <laughs> I don't. <laughs> the Okay, so that was actually a benefit of moving on up, that it turned. But is, so then you came across whether we could call it brilliance or luck uh probably both played a part in it but you discovered that you could solve this problem of how to play this game in a totally different way than you'd already done right um so essentially i i basically done some simulations to find out what sort of hands i needed to be playing in the specific game that i wanted and, but then to take this to, uh, to do, you know, a, a dissertation is a completely different thing. So for that, for that methodology, um, I, you know, it, it didn't strike me. The other, the simple method of solving this problem didn't strike me as at first because I had done this little simulation for what I needed. And then I just extended that out. Um, so the dissertation itself is more about things like, um, dynamic programming and speed ups and filtering. And it's basically saying that, you know, you can get, uh, a pretty accurate strategy without, uh, giving up much accuracy. Well, you're not going to give up much accuracy in your strategy and it becomes solvable in a reasonable amount of time on a computer. You don't need to, you know, it was never the intention for me at the beginning anyway, to come up with a perfect strategy, just something that was pretty close. Um, ultimately I did end up thinking about a little more and I came up with a simplified one. And, um, I think, uh, I, I think I know kind of where Mike might have not, you know, thought about it in this way and come up with it. And, uh, I think when Mike saw this game, he had already seen a table game or something like that where he had analyzed where there were double draws or something like that. And he said it took forever. And then when he saw this, I think he just was like, oh, I've solved something similar and it was almost impossible. This is just completely out of my reach. Um, however, I think in the, in that game, the cards were not replaced. And in this game, the cards that you discard are actually replaced in the deck. And that makes all the difference in the world. Because when the cards are replaced in the deck, um, you're starting from a default state. There's nothing, there's nothing weird. There's no additional like extra cards that are missing from the deck. So the, the simplified solution to this game is, and is, well, I mean, I'm not going to like sit here and list a strategy, but, uh, if you want to come up with it, think about the things that you need to do to solve a single line poker game. And basically what you do is you start with a hand, you look at every way to, you know, or a computer does you, you look at every possible way of throwing away the cards, what you're going to get in the end. It's 32 of them usually. And you come up with these sort of patterns where you say, okay, well, if I have this, I'm going to, you know, okay, I have queen jack suited, so I'm going to hold that. But you also know, once you've calculated this, you also know what the expectation of that pattern is. So for the double draw game, for example, and this extends out to the triple draw game as well, in the double draw game, instead of, you know, you have a pattern or whatever, and to figure out what you need to do on that first draw, 
you solve it the same way you would any other single line game. Now, you can't do this with, you know, the commercially available software, but if you have the algorithmic tools, the programs that could solve a single line poker game, then, or, then you can go to, to extend it, not it doesn't take too much to extend it to solve this because what you do is the solution for uh, the first draw is to basically look at what you get paid out, you know, what solve the first draw like you would any single draw game. But in addition to saying, okay, well, I made, you know, f five coins for a pair or 15 coins for three of a kind or whatever it is, what you do is you take that amount and you add it on to whatever the pattern is of the next draw, which is a single line game itself. So you're basically taking the payout for the current draw plus the pattern EV, whatever the value of that pattern is for the next draw and add that together. And by doing the same sort of analysis, you can come up with that, uh, with that strategy for the first draw as well. So it's actually because those cards are replaced, you don't need to consider the fact that they're gone in the next one, because that means your next hand is just a regular single line hand. So you can actually solve it this way. And, you know, again, it's a thing where, you know, I think Mike may have looked at it before, saw that it was very difficult and just overlooked it. Whereas I hadn't had that experience. I looked at it a little bit and I was like, why isn't this? Why can't you solve this in a really easy way? Once I actually sat down and looked at it. Um, now, the the implications of that, uh, well, I, there, there are implications for that for the actual dissertation itself in terms of, because, you know, you can basically have a have a difficult problem and or, or a problem that just nobody's looked at, but nobody cares about, you know. Um, and if you come up with a solution to that, maybe people don't care. But you can also, you can look at problems that you can solve in a variety of ways. Um, you know, you could even do something like the Pythagorean theorem. You know, if you come up with some new and original way that nobody's ever looked at to, nobody's ever looked at to look at the Pythagorean theorem, and that has implications in other ways, congratulations. People, have, you know, professors have no problem with that. You know, as long as it's new, original, unique, interesting in some way, even if there is a simpler solution, you know, the fact that you did something that, you know, with my work, uh, you know, I showed how it could be uh, used in other games, other filters, other speed ups and stuff like that. So that was a good uh, side effect of that. But that has all to do with computer science and nothing to do with, unfortunately, this game. So it's, this was the part I didn't care about. You know, it was like, OK, the game is interesting. The other stuff is not so. But that other, should you want, that other technique, the simpler or applied way would be publishable. Um, presumably, if, you, if, you, if you're in academia, I don't know that you are, it's a publisher parish world. And so publishing the second solution, the simplified solution, to show how that would work on other situations would be a uh, several you can milk that for several journal articles oh yeah absolutely um you know you can uh, you know you become you kind of become the expert in whatever you're doing and you can just kind of you know you can do all sorts of work in that area and the the hard thing is i think getting people to you know care about that in a lot of cases so often you are the only person that cares about that so that makes you the best at it though this is true <laughs> all right i want to thank big red he's, thank you. Uh, he brought it, his bodyguard kathy is in the background to make sure we didn't abuse him too much hopefully uh rich and i passed <laughs> at the end of every show we have a recommended section where richard and me come up with something that we bring to the audience's attention what I came with, I read in, I think it was msnbc.com, and it has to do with the date of 20, and that you, it's better to write it out as 2020 than 20. For example, if Big Red and I had a contract that we wanted to write out that was good to the end of September of this year and we wrote it as nine slash 30 slash 
20. And one or the other of us were unscrupulous and decided to add a 22 at the end of that. So it reads 9 slash 1 slash 2022. Now this contract that was going to be for a few months is going to be for two years and a few months. And that could cause problems. So I am not accusing Big Red of anything. I'm just saying protect yourself by if you mean it to end on 2020, write out 2020 rather than just plain 20. Uh, my recommendation this week is a browser extension of all things. Huh. Um, so it uh, this works with Chrome and Firefox. And it is called Library Extension, and you find it at libraryextension.com. And so it's an extension that goes on your browser. And if you're at, say, Amazon or pretty much any site and you're looking at a book, maybe you're thinking of buying it, on your browser it pops up and says, they have it at your library. So uh, I'm, I love the library system. I'm a big user of the library uh, mainly because I'm trying to get rid of stuff, not buy more stuff. Even though I used to hoard books, um, now I would rather just read it and not have to store it in my house somewhere. So, uh, and in, in addition, it tells you if they have audiobooks or ebooks or whatever. So, uh, so if you want to set it only for Kindle, for example, you could. Yeah, um, I think you could. Um, I mean, it just pops up and it says the library has it, and it'll say it has hard copies, it has ebooks, it, wow. you know, and it also has music and movies too. If you that that's an optional uh, thing that you can check on on it. But uh, anyway, so for me, I love this little extension. So anyway, it's library extension. There'll be a link to it in the show notes, and that's my recommended for the week. And an additional recommended for me is if you're listening to this show as we publish it richard and i are performing in an improv show this saturday night which is the 18th of january and more information to be found about that is lvimprov.com if you listen to it late we're doing it the same thing again february 15th don't tell anybody but it's my birthday that day and so uh, these are family-friendly shows in Las Vegas. Set you back $10. It's inexpensive comedy. If you're into storytelling, I'll be telling a story February 19th, probably, at the A Public Fit Theater. It happens that the audition for me doing this is going to take place after we uh, finish this podcast and I like my chances especially since Richard is one of the ones who have a vote as to whether or not my story is good enough and I've been taking care of him for Christmas so but I, oh, I uh, missed that <laughs> oh yeah did I forget to send that it's, it's, uh, wait, it's, we didn't ask Big Red if he had a recommendation oh uh no sorry I'm boring here uh, uh, yeah okay. they, they they put me on the spot and I was like I wasn't expecting this so. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so that'll be on February 19th, which is a Wednesday. That'll set you back another $10, but uh, it's at a public fit theater. So, and money for that goes to the theater company, which uh, is a great theater company here in town. So I, I would also recommend any plays that uh, they happen to be doing at the time you're here. Okay, thank you, Big Red. Thank Bye you, Kathy. Thank you, Richard. Go out and hit lots of royal flushes, everybody. Good day.